Hey guys, my name's Chad Gendison, and I'm a producer and songwriter out of Los Angeles. I write and produce for Universal Music Group, as well as a bunch of different bands. But today, we're gonna feature a band out of Texas called Messer. These guys are gonna be featured on a DAW that I've been using for about 20 years. So it's a digital performer. It's got little tricks and, and things that I love about it. It's a very musical DAW, in my opinion. And uh, we'll get into the sequence and show you guys some stuff. So one of the big things that uh, I love about DP is just, you know, after using it for 20 years, it's kind of like a, a second skin for me. Um, I don't want to have to worry about using it as a rig. I kind of want to be able to create and just do what I want to do with it. And I mean, I started out with these guys, uh, I think it was DP 2.4, like back in 2000 one or two maybe or something like that it was it was crazy but over the years uh they've uh they've grown and and there's a lot of interesting stuff you can do um for composers uh and for songwriters and just pretty much everything you need um a lot of midi flexibility uh surface flexibilities uh there's kind of a cool thing that digital performer has um called chunks and chunks is the ability to basically so say you're looking at the screen here and you have like your entire sequence in here, right? And it's mixed and it's automated and you've got all this stuff going on. What's awesome about Digital Performer is that you can actually save this to a chunk and open it and you can literally have and do automation and different plugins and all of this other stuff. Uh, so say you have a radio edit of this song. So we do a radio edit, we do a shortened version, we do the 10, the 60, whatever for placements um, that you know certain things need, bumpers, whatever. Um, it's really cool because then you can switch to a different chunk. You can have different processing plugins. And what's really efficient about it is that Digital Performer references the original audio files. So even if you cut this down and arrange it differently on a different chunk, it'll all kind of reference the same stuff. So it's super, super efficient. And you can have, I mean, with a modern computer or even, I think mine's a 2012 like cheese grater. You know what I mean? So fairly old in tech, but... I can have almost unlimited chunks in a sequence. Okay, so uh, one of my cool tricks with Digital Performer that I love uh, so much, and I hope they never like change this, um, is uh, their spectral effects pitch. Um, what I like to do with this is I'll take like a lead vocal, especially like in the verses or, or wherever it needs it, um, and instead of doing like a low octave sang verse, I'll actually do this uh, spectral effects it's like a pitch fit, shift so after comping after tuning and stuff like that i'll do that and what's so great about this thing is is that it's really it's really wonderfully kind of broken in a way you'd have to use like you'd have to use like maybe three other plugs to get this sound um so i'm going to show you like a before and after kind of or just like with it in the mix and then it's soloed but uh what it does is it'll pitch it down and and digital performer has uh this proprietary um, pitching algorithm called ZTX. They like licensed it. Um, it's this incredible algorithm. It does polyphonic shifting. And it, if you want perfect, that's it. Um, but this just kind of has this ability to make like a low vocal or a low octave vocal just kind of sound a little bit kind of sucked out, distorted, compressed. Like it's like three or four different plugins worth of work in just one. And you can tell it's a little bit busted because when you do use it, um, it actually like offsets the audio. So you have to bring the audio back. It's pretty cool. So I'll show you with the, like a verse and then I'll solo that part. And it kind of adds this like little roughness under it. So now if I just solo this low vocal, I struggle with the hate of a world yeah, I mean, it's died. like, not exactly sure what you'd call it, but it's just kind of one of those things that I love about this program. And I pray that they never fix it because like I said, I'm sure you could recreate it in a couple of different plugins or with some other outside plugin, but it's just great with this one. Um, so uh, another couple of things I love about uh, DP's like native plugins, they have a uh, FET76 compressor that's pretty dope man it's great on guitars it's great on overheads it's great on acoustic it's great on vocal um it's a super nice thing uh this is kind of a little secret weapon i have here uh i love this echo man i just um i don't know exactly 
I mean, you could probably get all the, the, the settings here from me, but it's just this weird multipole ADT delay, and it just has an interesting, interesting effect on vocals. So if I, like, solo the vocals for you, you can hear this. Oops. Let me make sure that you hear the main vocal, right? All right. Let's try that again. Uh, so I'll let you guys hear a little bit of the ADT delay uh, on and off, or just, you know, maybe kind of, it, it's just something that I use to add depth um, to the vocal. So here I'll do like uh, what where I use it at now, and I'll kind of increase it so you can hear the actual effect. See what I mean? It's just an ultra short delay, but a lot of times that I'll use that with... Um, I'll use that with uh, anything that kind of needs space in a mix. So I'll use it on guitars. I'll use it on background vocals a lot. Um, it helps give like width and depth and carves out room for the rest of your mix. So I love that with them. Um, their Masterworks EQ, I'm just kind of addicted to it. It's it's super. It sounds super great. Um, I use it on the master to uh, tame the lows, maybe push a little bit to the highs. And you know certain other things um, to help out the the the, the two bus for all that stuff, um, but yeah, I uh, I dig that a lot. Man, sometimes when you're working in a DAW and your eyes get tired, and you know you guys know what I'm talking about, like 16 hour days, um, your ears aren't working anymore, but you need to edit. You need to use your eyes for stuff. Uh, Digital performer has different themes, so. You can literally kind of like preview a little bit like what's happening here on the bottom right. And uh, I'm on the producer. I'm on the producer setting because, you know, <laughs> um, but I don't know. Like there's sometimes when it's just when your eyes need a break. So you double click on this. It changes the whole theme. Look at that. Boom. It's green. Uh, your mixing board uh, totally changes, you know, as well. Um, you know, they've got. Tron, whatever the, yeah, whatever that look is. Um, you know, there's a lot of different things. Uh, I think they even have like a wood green. See, nice and classy. So, you know, if you have nice people over and you want to bring out the china, then you put on the wood grain and everybody just feels super comfortable. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, so that's, those are some, some of the things I love. Uh, the themes, uh, are, are fun and now I'm going to change it back to my producer setting because you know okay now I can't f see it I'm blind there we go I gotta have my glasses my shoes are my glasses so I'll have them 